If you're looking for an efficient way to win jobs with hand sketches that help you stand out from the crowd while requiring very little time, sketching your concept designs over a photograph is a great way to go. And the Perspective Drawing Assist feature that comes with both Procreate and Morfolio Trace can make the design part easier and faster, even if you don't think of yourself as a great renderer. So let's reverse engineer the vanishing points and horizon in four different kinds of photographs so you can take advantage of the Perspective Drawing Assist feature that comes with both Morfolio and Procreate so you can win more jobs and spend less time creating fussy computer renderings with details you'll never use. Now I'm going to go slowly on this first one, but the principles will apply to all four kinds of photographs. So step one is to be in the gallery and go to a new canvas. And you know I love that 11 by 17 by 300 DPI canvas because it fits the whole draw to scale ecosystem. Now I'm going to insert a file. And I've already saved these files to my iCloud drive, but you want to do the same. I'll go into this perspective folder and I'll pull up the interior one point photograph that I've already saved. And you can get these in the link below, by the way, if you want to draw along. Now that photograph comes in small depending on its resolution. So I will uniformly enlarge it to a workable size. And there's no magic size or magic bullet for this. Uh, now I'm going to turn down the opacity of that photograph just so I can see the marks that I'm about to make more clearly. Then I'll add a layer and select a bright red just uh, for contrast purposes. Then I'll go in and select either the technical pen or sometimes the pencil as you'll see later. And I'm just going to draw along, I'm going to trace freehand along the largest and clearest lines that I can find that recede to the horizon. So I'm picking parallel lines that recede to the horizon. And when I do this, uh, number one, look for the most obvious place to draw it. But then what I do is I ignore the pencil tip as I pull the line and I just look at the alignment with the line in the photograph that I've chosen. Now it's not an exact science and it can be hard to find these lines sometimes, but look at how I'm pointing with my finger. I'll look for that discrepancy between the new line I've drawn and the line in the photograph already. And I'll just do the best job I can. And with a one point perspective, it's pretty clear that they always line up. They seem to always cross very well at the same point. And I'll just draw a circle at that point to remind myself later of where that is. Now with that point circled so I can clearly find it later, I'll go into the wrench menu, the actions menu, and I'll tap on the canvas tab and I'll go into drawing guide and activate that. And now I'll go into edit drawing guide and switch to perspective drawing guide mode, perspective drawing assist. And notice I'm going to jack up the thickness here because I want to see these lines as clearly as possible. And I'll also go ahead and adjust the color that the line will come in and make it as black as possible. And now I'm going to go back to that line and just tap once in the middle of that circle where those lines meet. And that creates the drawing assist guidelines that will help me draw all my lines in perspective or in vertical and horizontal later on. Now I'll go ahead and turn off the drawing guide so that those guidelines go away, but they're still there. And typically in this process, I'll, I'll go ahead and switch off those lines that we drew. And typically in this process, I will create a layer of trace. So I'll add a layer and drop in the color white. Then I'll open up that layer again and tap on the N icon, which is the blending mode, and I'll reduce the opacity. So I'm literally creating a layer of tracing paper, but I won't draw on that layer. I'll just label it trace so we can remember that. Now I'll go back and add another layer and I'll go into my colors and select that familiar red that I like to redline these things with. And now I'll make sure I'm in that new layer I added and there appears the Drawing Assist tab. It wasn't there before until we activated Drawing Assist, but it now appears in all the layers that we show, okay? So again, even though the guide is turned off in that Actions menu, the ability to activate Drawing Assist is still there. 
And you can see that small icon in the layer itself, by the way. So I will start drawing now and notice I'm not struggling or anything to create these perfect perspective and vertical and horizontal lines. I'm simply tracing the photograph and all of those vertexes are now virtually drawing themselves. But otherwise it's just a straightforward operation now to trace the photograph. And I'm not tracing it just to trace. I'm tracing it because I'm setting up the parts of the room that I know will stay there when I start to design over it. And once I trace just the parts I need, of course I'll switch back to freehand as you'll see in a moment and I'll do my design work, but when I go back and try and develop that design work, I will have that perspective drawing assist in place and ready to make my whole uh, experience much more efficient and make my work quicker. Now let's switch to how you reverse engineer these points from a two-point perspective. So I'll go back into my iCloud drive and pull in my interior two-point. And again, you can grab these photos in a uh, link below if you want to draw along. But I want to show you something subtle here. When these photos come in, they just come in as they are. And you can't always be sure that the verticals and the horizontals are truly vertical. So by activating the drawing guide before we start this exercise, and I'll go back and show you how I did that here, just tap in the actions menu and you'll see drawing guide come up and tab it back on. But once that's activated, I can go back into that transformation menu and select distort and just grab one corner of the photograph and I can pull that whole photograph into conformance with that 2D grid and make sure that my verticals truly are vertical. And this has to do with where your horizon, I'm sorry, where your horizon line will show up later. And we'll see that and I'll point that out to you when that comes. So now it's back to the normal process, adding a layer of trace, adding a layer above that, and stretching these lines, uh, parallel lines that converge into the distance, tracing a line along them, focusing on the discrepancy between the line and the photograph, and, and not worrying where they cross, and therefore coming up with what I would call a sort of law of averages vanishing point. And it, again, this is not precise, but once you look through there, you'll see where the majority of lines cross and you'll know that that is one of your horizon lines. Now I'll do the same going the other direction with, remember this is a two point perspective. So this is the major difference between photograph one and photograph two that we did previously. And I'll stretch those lines again, and I'll just keep putting my finger there and show you where I'm concentrating. I'm not worrying about where the line ends up off to the left. But because those lines will not intersect off to the left, it's going to make it a little trickier to find the vanishing point. You'll see that in a moment. So I'll go back into the drawing guide and back into edit drawing guide. I'll go into perspective mode. I'll beef up the thickness, although I'm going to leave the lines green this time. And we'll pick up that first one to the right. That's easy. But now the tricky one is the one to the left. And this is where I'll often use a piece of paper or a 3 by 5 file card to help me extend that line past the point where they are supposed to intersect. And then I'll place that second point there. And everything looks to be in order. And because we checked the verticality of the photograph, I know that the horizon line is going to be in the right place. So... Let's turn off drawing guide now and let's do our usual routine. We'll work this into our muscle memory. I'll add a layer. I will use the red pencil directly over this layer now. And as I start to draw, look what happens. It's actually a freehand line. And that's because I forgot to turn on the drawing guide from within the layer. So tap on the layer tap on drawing assist and there you are again your lines are all conforming to the perspectival lines in the photograph now i'm not making this my most beautiful tracing job i'm just trying to show you how useful this tool is so i'll just hit a few of the basics but again this is setting the stage i'm keeping the things that i've been asked to keep for the design but i'm making sure that this photograph is all set up so that when I do want to do a more careful version of my freehand design ideas, they're ready to go.
Now, photograph three is an exterior one-point perspective, and I'll keep my comments to a minimum this time and just hit the highlights because now you know all the routine. Okay, adjusting the photo, adjusting the opacity, activating drawing guide to check those verticals, and they look pretty good. Adding a layer, adding a red color, adding a pencil, and now I'm going to draw those perspectival lines, those parallel lines that recede to the same point in the distance, which of course is the horizon line. And I've got that marked. That was pretty easy. Now this is a one point perspective as I sold this exercise to you. But if you look closely at the sidewalk and at some of these parking spaces, you do get a second parallel set of lines. And just in case there ends up being an awning in the new design or something that's projecting out to the left side of the drawing, I'm just going to go ahead and put in that vanishing point as well. So I really do have a two-point perspective, but I think you really could have done this as a traditional one-point perspective. There goes the card again. So this is good muscle memory. You can see the card again, layering and the tracing. And again, this is freehand by accident. I forgot to activate the perspective drawing assist in the layer. I'll do that now and I can zip through this. Now let's, I'll give you an example of uh, if you are going to design over this. Okay, so I will switch to freehand and I'll make sure that my um, layer is turned off, my drawing assist guide is turned off and I'll switch to a fatter brush and then I'll just start playing over the top of this storefront, okay? Getting my, getting my ideas out in the loosest form possible with a big dumb pen. And this really helps me, helps me free up my thinking. So um, that's a little taste of the whole process after you reverse engineer these vanishing points and horizon lines. In the case of reverse engineering the perspective on an exterior photo with two vanishing points, let's use this classic photo of Villa Savoy by Corbusier. And notice the obvious third vanishing point, the uh, fact that the camera is pointed up so there's a third vanishing point in the sky. So let's lighten the photograph and let's address that. And I go right to the transformation menu and I use distort mode, remember, and I'm going to pull in these corners. Distort mode allows you to work independently on each corner. I'll pull them in until they align with that 2D grid set up by drawing kit. And then I can still stretch it out to uh, return to its original proportions. So this is a terrific uh, way to transform a photograph. After that, it's all the same routine. The parallel lines that converge to a vanishing point get traced. And then we will be able to set up drawing guide on a new layer and start to trace the parts of the photo that we want to keep. And you can see here I'm having a little trouble seeing if my lines uh, comply with the lines of the photograph. So I've switched the perspective guide color from that green that comes standard to this black. And now I can find these vanishing points. And remember, it's very important to keep that horizon directly horizontal and that's because you don't want to distort or throw off your verticals later on. So pay special attention when you adjust those vanishing points. Make sure that the horizon of the second vanishing point stays on the same line created by when you establish the first vanishing point. And now our tracing works fine and we can keep just those parts of the drawing we want. You can see we're a little bit off, but uh, you can adjust that yourself later. I'm just trying to show you the principles. And now I'm going to add a layer, and uh, God forbid I should ever design over this building. But I'll show you what would happen if, let's say, you wanted to create a banner that advertised a new show, a new retrospective for Corbusier. You'd put that on a separate layer like this. You'd use a fatter brush, and you'd go at it with your design ideas. If you want to try these techniques on your own, download the photos I'm using at the link in the description below. You'll also find links to three ways to become a better iPad designer, including a link to watch our free workshop, a link to browse our online courses, and a link to buy any of the game-changing Procreate tools you've seen me use in these videos. Or even simpler, just click on the video on the screen to take your next step toward becoming an iPad designer. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.